It's funny. I remember people talking about street ball like it was a fad. <laughs> sort of like hip-hop music. <laughs> you see street ball in everything. From the NBA to just regular pickup games. Yes, the NBA. When you see Steph Curry do a no-look three-pointer. When you see acrobatic alley-oops. When you see the amazing handles from all these NBA players. That all came from street ball. I want you to sit back and relax and take this journey with us. As we talk about this business and this passion of street ball that we all fell in love with from the early 90s to late in the 2020s. This is the story from the ground up, <laughs> a platinum experience. Yo, what up, man? It's your man, Mr. Cheeks, man. Hey, you already know who I'm banging it with, man. My man, DJ Formula, man. We put it in, man. Let's do it. DJ Formula in the building. Delaware, stand up. Who knows? During this three-part docu-series, episode one, we're going to take you on a journey to meet some of the Platinum Street Ballers, old and new. We're going to take you on a little journey on behind the scenes, pulling back the curtain and having a little bit of fun. This right here is the ground up, episode one. With the inception of N1 Basketball, a lot of much needed eyes was placed on street ball. So along with N1, there was a lot of eyes placed on other organizations, such as the Harlem Globetrotters, the Harlem Wizards, and one team that no one was thinking about that was started in the shadows of this little state called Delaware, the Platinum Street Ballers. Hard to believe that this team started in Delaware, knowing that we've been all over the world, all over the country. Platinum Street Ballers was started in early 2003. The main focus of the Platinum Street Ballers was to become the first Delaware team to represent in the Rucker EBC. Since this time, the team, the Platinum Street Ballers, has been formed into one of the biggest streetball organizations, underground streetball organizations in the business today. Being a figurehead and agent for raising millions of dollars for other nonprofit organizations, charities, and more. Well, you know, starting out was kind of crazy because it was little games here, little games there. Uh, then we started to graduate to college games, you know, working with homecomings and things of that nature. And then all of a sudden, and getting with bigger sponsors, you know, some of the sponsors over the years have been like Sobe Life, um, I've got so many, so many to name, and we started doing tours, you know, three, four days here, you know, four or five days here, and doing the tours, we started to inquire, you know, a lot more talent. Once N1 dissolved, then that's when a lot of the N1 players started to come play with me because we were the only active independent street ball tour that wasn't dictated by another entity so it was basically come holler at me and i cut a check you know to make it happen i was the last signature on any check or contract i didn't have anybody to answer to so if white chocolate wanted to come over and play then come on and play if helicopter wanted to come over and play then come on and play you know Pat the Rock, prime objective, main event, <laughs> hot sauce. You wanted to play? Come on, let's go. Let's rock. Well, I've gotten advice and two looks from a lot of people, but I would say that the most influential was probably Pee Wee Kirkland, speaking with the man himself. Yeah, because I was playing basketball and I was involved in life of crime. Okay, 
it's official. We are on the No Mercy Tour, aka, I like to call it the Startup Tour. What I normally do when I get new guys together, I do like a little two day, three day, maybe four day run, smaller schools with smaller books. And you know, get the feel out there and do what we gotta do. Right now, we are at a place called Wise of Virginia. Later on tonight, we'll be in Princeton, West Virginia. On the first leg of the No Mercy Tour, Midwest run. Now, Wise Virginia is a place that you probably wouldn't think about when you start talking about street ball, or even when you speak about Virginia. In Princeton, West Virginia, the home of Concord University, another place that's really big on street ball. Every time we come out this way, it's a really good food, great people, and some of the best nightlife. Oh, yeah, you probably wouldn't believe that. But yes. Everybody back out the last minute, except for me. Who's going to New York? It's like we had Dre, George. Oh, we were like. That was old. That was, yeah, everybody in the back. It was crazy because it was like everybody back up the last minute because it wasn't even like a bad situation. It was like everybody had like real life problems. Like, yeah, which was crazy. One time. And then at the last minute, I had to back up. Remember, I couldn't go. I couldn't go either. Y'all already know what time it is, man. Shout out to everybody in the doc. That's why I be in the documentary. Y'all already know it's your boy Poppy. It's your boy DT. Yeah, you know I mean, checking in. Or you know me by Brooklyn, but mainly I went by Poppy. You know what I mean? And how I pretty much I got into Platinum Street Ballers. You know what I mean? How I pretty much got into Platinum Street Ballers is pretty much I was in, I was brought along by a, a player by the name of UPS. You know what I mean? We called him UPS because he had ups. See what I'm saying? UPS spells ups. And he could jump. You know what I mean? So he brought me along when I was a senior. And he he said, like, yo, I see you ain't getting a deal. I'm about to go to the military. If you want to play with, we got a semi-pro team I'm playing with. If you want to play with it, you know what I mean? You come along and play, whatever. And that's pretty much how I got, you know what I mean? Brought along with the Platinum Street Ballers. And you know I mean, that's when I was 16, turning 17 in my, in my senior year. And it's been a great experience. I've been all up and down the East Coast. I appreciate DJ Formula, you know what I mean, the Platinum Street Baller team, AM1, everybody, you know what I mean, bringing me in with love all these years. You know what I mean, all, all the, you know what I mean, all the support up and down the East Coast from our team, you know what I mean, from, you know what I mean, all the, the community centers, the schools, colleges, everything like that. I mean, I definitely just appreciate all the love. I remember when I was first introduced to Young Brooklyn, man, it was like, my man UPS was like, it's my man Poppy, he does his thing. And I knew Poppy's story because his story was a little bit like my story. Uh, as far as when it came down to go to college, everybody played the politic role because you may not have been the model student in high school. Now, all of a sudden, we don't know what we could do with you in college. Yet, you know, our skills are off the charts, you know, in two different sports. Of course, he played basketball. I played football. So immediately I wanted to make sure I helped this cat get to wherever he needed to get to in this game for real, because he was an outstanding talent and he was one of my favorites. He never complained. Never complain, always there. I only had to tell him one time, and he would show up. That's my guy, Young Brooklyn, all day. Um, now, for my games, 
man, I had a lot of dope ass games, bro. From with Baltimore, with uh, Murphy Lee from uh, Nelly's Camp to Q from 112. Was at Baltimore. That was one of the epic games. You know what I mean? But my favorite game, bro, had to be like during like the end of my 15 year run when I was like, yo, I'm about to retire. And it had to be in Georgia. And I had three good games, one with White Chocolate and uh, Roscoe. But I also had, uh, I pulled out two games. I pulled out one game, I pulled out my signature move called the Scorpion. And But my favorite game had to be when I did the Curry shoot shot and walked that walked away and and won the game it was the last shot of the game and i shot that bitch it was at augusta state i think albany state it was at albany state and i, I was complaining about the ball and i shot that bitch bomb but when i shot it like midway in the air i already knew that bitch was going in i turned around and started talking shit to the crowd like it's over y'all lost you know what i mean this was before curry, curry started doing it and i got nothing to do nothing but love and appreciation because curry never said he started that he never did he just started doing it you know what i mean everybody was like oh curry started that i was the original one that started the platinum street that came from platinum street ballers and it's from when i hit a game winner because i was mad like bro i could bro i'm i'm a hooper my nigga give me the ball and they gave me the last shot i hit that bitch and ride right, that bitch in the air nigga i'm walking back talking shit like it's game over other than that, y'all already know, man, it's been a great experience. And shout out to DJ Formula one more time. Much love. Well, Poppy most definitely brought something back on that one. Talking about Albany State. Oh, my gosh. That situation went viral. That was on YouTube and 400,000 views in, like, two months. That was a crazy game. And shout out to Steph Curry, too, because I know we've been to North Carolina a few times. And I know Steph has been to a couple games. Um, I remember his dad came to one game one time, too. It was a... Yeah, it was just an honor to meet uh, Dale Curry. It was an honor to meet But let's go back to Augusta State, um, Albany State for a minute. It was a very hostile situation. A lot of crazy things happened. I don't want to get into them personal. But uh, it was just a bad look. And the, the, the referees were like on their side all day long. They wouldn't get no calls or anything. And it made Poppy upset. Now, if you know anything about Poppy, y'all know. Poppy can either, we can either have a beautiful game. I mean, anybody's enjoying it, having fun. Or you can foul him real hard and act a fool and he can pull a cannon on his back. Like, you never know. It all depends what kind of day Bobby's having. <laughs> we can get good game or we can get cannon. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter. But with any of that, he put the game on his back. And we were down by like 21. And when I tell you, he came back in the fourth quarter and brought us all back to within two points with eight seconds left. He said, yo, give me the ball. I got this. And it's like, yo, give him the ball. <laughs> he got it. If he shot the ball in the air, he turns to the crowd. It's like, it's over for y'all. Ball goes in, he turns the other way and walks towards the door to leave. I said, man, I've never seen that. Shout out to Steph Curry. Shoots the ball and come back down the court. He shot the ball left because he said, it's over for y'all. Y'all tried to do everything y'all could. To, to, to discourage us and, and put us in a bad situation, couldn't do nothing with us. Shout outs to my man, Young Brooklyn.
This portion of the program is sponsored by Ashy's Best Lotion. Put shine on that ash. I'm Orvid Clay from seasons one and two of the Dave Chappelle Show. Orvid Clay, that's what I say. That's Orvid Clay. From the ground up, the experience. What do you know? We talking about the platinum street ballers, DJ Formula, Foundation. We go way back. He brought me out for several of the events. Celebrity referee, comedy show host. 15 years in the making, I've been around. Formula. The way you grab up all these players and hit the road and put on a show. The platinum street ballers doing it. Crazy from the ground up. For a clay, that's what I say. Just shine on it, boy Lamar aka Black and the Platinum Street Ballers man uh, man so many memories uh, I start off by saying um, I was first introduced to the group I want to say back in 2000 it's like 04 05 ish uh, I remember my man Mike we called him IHOP um, he hit me up along with Josh and asked me to come out to a workout and that's why I met um my man Dewey Jackson, I met uh, UPS, LeBron, uh, maybe my boy Josh, Lil Mike, and um, I remember I did a few few practice games with him, and then we actually uh, went out to Connecticut. Uh, we went and we played at uh, Connecticut State, I believe. I mean, that was my first game. It was an all-out experience, um, amazing experience. I want to say my favorite game to this day has to be something um, South Carolina, something South Carolina. Oh man, um, I just remember uh, my boy uh, Roscoe Johnson, Saj. I introduced him to the group. Uh, we went out there and we we played at a university and the. Oh man, the, the audience was into it. Um, it was a it was a show. It was a show. We had so much fun, and then um, they invited us out uh, to a party. Uh, me, and my boy D Nice, my man Chris Breezy, Roscoe, all we man, Josh, Mike. We all had a great time, man. Um, so just want to say uh, big ups to uh, my man D D Jackson, D Jackson, you know, for uh, bringing me on to the squad over the years. You know, um, I'm forever grateful and forever thankful, man. All right, yo, shout out to my man Lamar Bentley on this one. Ooh. Um, when I first met him, this one makes the story so funny. I think he was in school for like four years. And we just get ready to get out of school. So fast forward about five years from that, we're at Virginia State University. And when I say we had a humongous crowd, oh my gosh, we had a whole bunch of talent on the floor. We had White Chocolate, Josh, Johnny Blaze, Roscoe, Pat the Rock. We have a man, uh, Rodney from BET College Hill um, from the Virginia State uh, time. <laughs> It was so funny how it was like after the game we beat Virginia State by like 32. And it was like after the game, Black said, yo, I gotta get back. I got class in the morning. And my man Josh Blaze jumped up and said, yo, you still at school, bro? He said, we was in school at the same time, but I'm damn near 30. And he was like, <laughs> you know. And what made that so funny was white chocolate's face. He was like, like what? Like, yo, Black's been in school for like a good 10 years. Like, this cat's going to be a doctor. That's all we kept saying, man. But it was like, 
You know, it is what it is, man. That's my brother. Like, you know what I mean? I want to see Black be so successful. I mean, whatever it is he do, I want to see him win. Like, he called me right now and said, yo, I don't want to do basketball no more. I don't want to train no more. I just want to be a professional ice cream truck driver. I'm like, yo, let's go get some ice cream trucks. Let's make it happen, man. Let's, let's, let's do it. It's me. That's my brother, man. I mean, that's what it is, man. One of my favorite Platt Street Ballers. One of my originals. One of my originals. As it was written, 2023, the year of platinum. She's my main friend. Hey, boy. Would you meet me on the roof tonight? I got a surprise for you. All right, we're at day two of the Platinum Streetball No Mercy Tour Midwest Run, and we are in a beautiful place. This right here, oh my goodness, is Bluefield, West Virginia. And the name itself is beautiful, but the place is even more beautiful. The people, the food, the hospitality. And hey, when we get out to a place we love, we gotta go see the people and touch the people. You know what it is. For the 80? What are these, the KDs? Yeah. Or these. Them the Trey Youngs. I know them. That's hot. Ice tray. Yeah. Don't like them? Like it's cold. Dames like to. I mean, them dames, they, they are. What are these, the curries? Yeah. I'm not feeling those, bro. <laughs> look, look, there you go to Kyrie's for the 60. What? Look, hmm? right here. Them weak. <laughs> them weak. <laughs> them weak. Look at them. At all. I'm like, I gotta try these. Damn, these 200? These are new yards. Yeah, Bro, it's a 90 in the window. That's oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is 95. This should say 200. What's going on? Hey, man, Ron. Man, Ron. What you getting? You getting these? We're going to figure yeah. it out. And now Alright. Um, so I, I've looked you up a little bit and uh, you actually turned fifty in January. So fifty yeah. fifty turning fifty. Oh yeah. I thought that was actually uh, pretty cool. Um, how do you uh how do you stay so healthy and uh, have this longevity in your career? Oh man, see I got the ankle weights on right now, you know. Just trying to all uh, I never smoke, I never drink, nothing like that. You know, just, just, you know, just stay fit man, and try to do the things I did the game. Some players, they get to the point and they fall off. Right, right. Hanging out, smoking, drinking, not doing the right thing, so I try to do the right thing. Look at that. 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 Nobody's gonna get mad at nothing like that. Nobody cares. Like, for real. I don't know. I mean, everybody was fixing it. 
Ah, uh, forget it. Throw him in there. He, he cool with it. He cool yeah. with it. Uh, <laughs> throw me in there. I'm out. <laughs> <You know? laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's your name now? Casey. Casey. Okay. 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 Good fans, man. Okay. You did a great job. Thank you. You're really loyal. And you're really good. Thank yeah. you. And you can fool. <laughs> and you can do this. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Sir, how are you doing? Can't complain. So, where are you from originally? I'm from Eastern Shore, Maryland. It's in the country. I'm born originally. It's called Ridgely, Maryland. Okay, so you saying it's from the country. Was there a lot of basketball around where you live? Yeah, that's really all it is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Detroit Pistons. I'm a Pistons fan, so. Yeah, yeah. I look up to him, Chauncey Billington type of guy. Did you always want to do this street ball, or did you have ambitions to go to college? I had ambitions to go to college. I ain't gonna lie, I was trying to make it to the league, too. But, you know, it's tough to make it to the league. Do you have any... You started what 10 years ago to now, like, what is different, man, as far as like the people we play with, the places we go? I feel like it's different because, like, I'm getting closer to the players when I first met them. Mm -hmm. I mean, the relationships are getting better, closer. We play well together, and everybody's starting to dwell as a team. And I feel like the competition getting better too now. Yeah, notoriety. Yeah. Now people start to, the people practice for us to come yeah. on, on campus. You it's know? like, we beat them, nigga. We beat them, and they think about it. And they practice, get different players. One more like question: As far as when you grew up watching M1, with the with the, the beginning of street ball, into now you being one of the main faces on the front line of street ball, how do you look at street ball? Is it the same thing as do you still have the same passion for it? Do you look at it more as a job now? I look at it as both. I look at it as a job and passion because I love the game anyway. So it don't even matter as far as everything else. I love the game. Period. Like growing up looking at hand one, like that was my that's what I wanted to do. I love going out to do tricks every day. Try it every day. Of course I don't do it now too much. I'm a little older. <laughs> <laughs> got you. Yeah, but I love street ball. Like I grew up just looking at street ball. I got all the hand one I got you. Now on a veteran standpoint, how does it feel to work with fifty? Oh my god, man, I mean a lot, man. Fifty a legend. You know what I mean? I got you. I remember fifty throw it off the shot clock. I was telling Riley that the other day. Like I never forget that. I ain't never seen nobody do that before. Got you. Seeing 50, um, who else we run into? Uh, Roscoe, Prime Objective, you know what I mean? Shout out to Roscoe. Young looking at Eighth Wonder. Yeah, he'll be with us next week. Yeah, even Sauls too. I ain't seen him play, he ain't play with us, but I seen him. Got gotcha. you. Grow up looking at them dudes all the time, them dudes are legends. So it's an honor. Got gotcha. you. Know I, mean? I don't play without 50 either, so 50 don't come on though. <laughs> Hey, what's up, y'all? It's your boy Roscoe Johnson, a.k.a. Roscoe, or Sarge, whichever one. Um, but I got introduced to the Platinum Street Ballers by uh, my boy Chris. They call him Chris Breezy at the time. Um, he was telling me that he's making some money, you know, playing with his basketball team, the Platinum Street Ballers. And I was like, oh, word. Shoot, why not? Why not try out or, you know, showcase my skills? So that's when I, you know, met up with uh, Lamar. They call him, they call him Black. Um, all of us clicked. We had a chemistry going, and I think the first game I went to with them was either DC or Atlanta City. Um, that's where I met Dewey, and that game was phenomenal. My first game being that in that type of atmosphere, um, just you know, showcasing my skills. Dewey being a cool ass dude that he was, full of life. Always want to see everybody be successful and do good. Um, it's just that game was just so entertaining to me because it was my first time, you know, kind of like my first time being in that atmosphere. You know, I was already, you know, hitting the road kind of. 
but you know, Dewey always, you know, kept his word. He always uh, helped out everybody. He always looked out for everybody. Always full of love. Um, Dewey, I always, you know, thank you, and I show all my gratitude, my love, my blessings to you and the family. Uh, thank you for, you know, inviting me to the Platinum Street Baller family. I love you all from D Nice to UPS to Ron Slim. Black, Chris, everybody in the whole Platinum Street Bar family, I love y'all. And I respect, I respect each and every last one of you guys. Um, oh, don't let me forget Erratic to um, VA in the building. But uh, yeah, uh, that's my time. I gotta, I'll see you guys. I gotta get to work. But uh, love you guys. Platinum Street Bar family, love y'all. Out. first met Erratic, the first thing I thought was, look at this guy, he's a pretty dude, he can't play basketball. But he got out there and showed me differently, completely. He became one of the most talked about and loved the faces of the Platinum Street Ballers. He became the most disciplined, and he was the one that I would take all the time when it came to do business. So he got to see things firsthand. That's my big homie right there, Erratic. Let me introduce you guys to Newport News' second, number two son. This right here is Erratic. About to go to the next stop, man. He looked tired. Yeah. Going on. How you doing, doing great. It's in my jeans, man. Started playing basketball when I was five. My mom coached me until I was 10. Then I started playing AAU for the Hampton Hoyas. Then I went to Bethel for a couple years. Came to Ward. Coach Moore took a chance on me, allowed me to touch the floor. It felt good. If you trying to check just to see what I'm doing, time to log out. 1998 was a good year, man. Started watching the mixtapes. And it was like, if you couldn't make it to the NBA, who wouldn't want to be there? Used to go to Foot Locker, cop the big shorts with the trash talking t shirt Standing in the mirror thinking I was hot sauce. Might have been mild, you know, but <laughs> it was all for the love, man. I was at work. My man Push hit me. He was like, yo, they having a street ball game across the water. They ain't got no opponent, so they need players. So I had to ask one of my coworkers, like, yo, I pay you whatever so I can go play basketball. You mind taking my shift? She was like, nah, I got you. So I got to shout out Patty, because if it weren't for Patty, I wouldn't even be here in this position right now. And then um, I went over there. Played the game, got a call like a week later for my trial run. After that, it was a wrap. I'm in the game, coach. Man, it had to be when we was in Georgia. I was used to the city, like Atlanta, outskirts. Now we in Rome, we in the country. They say we going to Berry College. I'm like, all right, cool, I'm with it. Nighttime. I already got a fear of deers. They got deers running all around that joint. So I'm going five miles per hour. I ain't trying to hit nothing. I ain't trying to let nothing hit me. Then on top of that, 
it was like, yo, we in the middle of nowhere. Like, I don't think nobody gonna be here. So we pull up, man, line wrapped around the building. You know, so I was out there, me, Roscoe, White Chocolate, my man Fresh, Poppy. Like, we went in there and it was crazy. Like, that gym was so lit. Man, I was born in Saginaw, Michigan, so I'm a big Michigan fan. Watch the Fab Five, you know, and I'm just big on sports as far as Michigan goes. Bad boy fan, you know. Got love Dennis Rodman, who don't? Then I got a love for AI, you know, being from here, it even made me feel more special, more better. And then can't forget the masked man himself, Richard Hamilton. So that's kind of who I polished my game after tried to be like and there you go you got me my whip to the pick and pull now i just got a new mental cure that might put me in that new benazor the paperwork i just got up in that mail let me know that they mad for sure huh. i'm building an empire they live up in the wire where i'm moving look like i'm on tour to these i just be laughing my way to the bank okay we are winding down now this is day three technically day four because the first day was a promo day but this is day three, and we are in a place that you guys probably never heard of. This is Pikeville, Kentucky. You would have never thought about this place when it come down the street ball. But this is one of my favorite places in the country. As you may already know, I was a part of a radio show called The Platinum Show, the first ever college syndicated radio show in the country. And this area, my goodness, was live when I should come out here for parties. Now we're going to do the thing with street ball. My name is Adam Manos. I'm the Assistant Director of Student Activities here at the University of Pikeville. Uh, my experience with the Platinum Street Ballers has been um, great. Um, we've played them three times officially, um, two times in which we went about having some competitive games. Uh, the first time meeting uh, the Platinum Street Ballers and working with uh, Dewey Formula uh, Jackson. It was a pleasure. He made it very simple, um, basically letting me know what his his idea and what he wanted to do and, and why he thought this was a good thing. Um, I'm from New York City, so I understood street ball. Um, I knew some of the legends and some of the the great craftsmanship that some of these street ballers um, showcase. So when that idea came, I looked at it as Man, what, what a great way to bring that, bring a little bit of New York to this area of Kentucky, Pikeville. Um, with our population being in the eastern part of Kentucky, it's predominantly um, white. So me not knowing how students who play basketball, if they would understand the street ball mentality, the street ball lingo. So um, when I started letting students know they started realizing like, oh yeah, I remember um, 
things like and one mixtape things like that those street ball legends where they saw at rucker park things of that nature and i was like okay i was and that that kind of created a little bit of buzz um that first game that we had um yes the street ball legends were the platinum street ballers were platinum uh, they they gave us that whooping uh which is perfectly fine because we the students didn't want to be put on posters uh how they say uh nowadays they didn't want to be put on posters they didn't want to um be be memes so that that kind of shied them away from really going in on and trying to play um some of the platinum street ball but hold on i might have to hijack this story for one second that sounds almost like an excuse but we're gonna let that slide one of my favorite cities in the whole world pikeville kentucky we look forward to the rubber match coming up later this year we're going to probably make that the very first game we broadcast on Platinum Network as far as street ball. That's also coming soon. Shoutouts to my guy, Adam Linus, at University of Pikeville, and that whole area. Now I'm going to take this opportunity to introduce to you guys one of my favorite Platinum street ballers, one of our originals, my man Derek Fields, a.k.a. D-Knights, representing Stanton, Virginia. Yo, 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 know it is, man. It's your boy, D-Knights. Ball handler, and, uh, give me the rock. I can do whatever with it. Uh, I, had a, I had great experience with playing a street baller, man. Like, I met him when I was uh, I was in Virginia. I was killing, killing. It was only right that you know to hoop with him. So you know, I just I've been a lot of places with him. Uh, my most memorable memorable game would probably be. Uh, John, we went to some, nah, that's not good. We went to uh, St. Paul's. Pack, the gym was packed. Me, Roscoe, Big Mike, uh, White Chocolate, uh, Lamar, Ups. Squad was, 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 whew. I just remember me dribbling the ball. Couldn't nobody get the ball from me. Me dribbling the ball, boom, boom, boom. Literally going between somebody's legs. I bounce the ball, I do a break dance on the basketball, and I slide between somebody's legs. Then when I do that, I bounce the ball, and all I know is Roscoe just jumped over me and grabbed the ball and windmilled it. Shut the whole gym down. Big Mike blocking everybody's shot, man, just off the glass, the mic and stuff. I mean, that game was crazy. Crazy. I don't know, I just had a lot of good good memories with Platinum Street Ballers, man. And, you know, I, I got the opportunity to play with a lot of people, man. I'm like Future, uh, my homeboy, uh, uh, White Chocolate, uh, Rest in Peace, Alamo. Uh, I've been a lot of places, man. And, you know, played a lot of professional basketball, you know. I'm just, I'm just an honor to be, you know, to be able to play with Platinum Street Ballers, man. As it was written, 2023, the year of platinum. She's my main thing. Hey, boy. Would you meet me on the roof tonight? I got a surprise for you. Thank <laughs> you. 
First time I've shared this story publicly. So one of the reasons why I'm so passionate about streetball and why it means the most to me is because you know not always making the best decisions growing up, never really made you know never really had the opportunity I would say to make the right decision to put me in the best possible situation if that makes sense. But Troy Jackson, Escalade, I remember him telling me that my word is all you have at times. When people don't know you in business, your word is all you have. So, All-Star Weekend was in New Orleans the year before. I came out there and it was like a beautiful situation. I got to meet people and network. And I told Troy, I said, next year I'm doing a big game. Next year it's in LA, I'm gonna do, all, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it. And this is, this is the first time I told this story publicly. So, like the whole year, I was planning on doing it, planning on doing it, but the money wouldn't line up. I couldn't do things the way I wanted to. And I was kind of ashamed to tell Troy that I couldn't do it. So I just kind of let it go. We would go months without talking or anything like that anyway, so it wouldn't matter. And he gets out the All-Star Weekend. And he's like, what's going on, man? What's your problem? And I was like, man, you know, I told, well, I told him about two months before that I couldn't do a game. But then I told him I was going to come out there. And I didn't do that, you know what I mean? Because I couldn't afford it at the time, right? I mean, we were talking about that trip, hotels, all that stuff. I didn't have the money. And, you know, it just turned into a situation where he was like, look, I told you, man, your word is it. If you told me you're going to be here, you should be here. If you told people that you were going to be here, you need to be here. And, you know, at that time, not thinking that would be the last conversation I had with the homie. And it was like, you know, he was phone disgusted at me and it went and, and rightfully so he should have been disgusted because you know I didn't do what I said I was going to do so you know I go to sleep I wake up to hear that he's gone now we're talking about a situation where it's like his last conversation with me he was so disappointed to me all because I couldn't keep my word at that point, it's like, everything I say I'm going to do at this point, I'm going to do it. Everything that I can do to help younger cats who may be in a situation, I'm going to do it. And, I mean, and if we keep doing it the right way, the money's going to come. It's not even about the money. Sometimes it's about just doing what you I love you so much, man. And, and you didn't even have, bro, you didn't have to ever say anything to me. You never even had to put me on the right track. You never had to do any of that. But I love you so much for doing that. And I promise you, until the wheels fall off, bro. The wheels fall off, man. The last of the big men. Freedom Call. Call street ball. Yeah. Ain't gonna be no others like him. That's it. And you're getting that official from officially. the mouth. The mouth of street ball. That's right. Officially. The first train of street ball. Don't get in the way. Who might get ran on? Give it up. Come on, when I say give it up, I mean give it up. On behalf of everyone here at Platinum Street Basketball, Leslie Martin, Jamie Elzey, Edward Vermeer, and myself, Dewey Jackson, a.k.a. DJ Formula, we would like to thank all of you guys for taking this time with us as we travel down this road of street ball and giving you the Platinum experience. Episode 1 is now in the books. Episode 2 will be coming soon. All right. Also, be on the lookout for 
the Platinum Kush Mixtape Tour coming September 2023. Now, as always, street ball goes hand in hand with music, so we gotta give you guys some bars. Some bars, all right? Any music that you guys want us to play, check out this email right here below. Send all your music here. Send all your music videos here. And as we leave, we leave y'all with a music video from the one and only. Well, I wear many hats. <laughs> DJ Formula, let's drop the DJ. Here's Formula. <laughs> Big boss, Ricky Wilson, right now, y'all checking in with none other than my brother, Formula. Man, it's your man, Mr. Chiefs, man. I fly to Delaware, you already know who I'm banging it with, man. My man, DJ Formula, man. <laughs> you are about to witness a return like no other. It's been a long time coming, now I'm back on my job. I'm back like Cook Crack, it's the return of the... Kettle one gangster, slick tongue wordplay Retired for a week, but resurrected the third day And niggas talking money got me laughing like How they got the nerve to put beats to they capping like I know a lot of real niggas, y'all ain't that Y'all probably snitching for pussy with a smile And that's fact, he's back the wise word Kodiak Respected in the hood I'm a legend in a throwback R.I.P. Dom Young legend We the army Protected by an angel So you haters can't harm me VIP status My connection is crucial The first in the hood To do things you only could Google Platinum parties Did that Multi-whips Did that A hundred grand in the hood Got it flipped in the spin Ha Y'all niggas done did it Y'all was talking that shit Real money y'all Got you haters on the run now Cause I'm back on my shit Y'all niggas done did it, did it. Y'all was talking that shit Got them haters on the run now Cause I'm back on my shit See I was gone for a minute Now I'm back on my B.I. Television money hustle game like T.I. My peace stands for presence So my presence always V.I. OG still sunning Joe niggas like G.I. Delaware raised with a worldwide swag City to city pimping with a worldwide bag all-Star Weekend, CI Double Official With big guns and bullets the size of dill pickles Money over everything, profit over BS Realness over buffoonery, pussy over stress Words before guns, but guns before death Make sure your circle is tighter, your circle goes left Made a lot of money, but my friends stay the same Long as I stay official, then the game don't change Drip stay classy, the money's getting bigger Probably the main reason your girl love fat niggas <laughs> Y'all niggas done did it, did it Y'all was talking that shit Got you haters on the run now Cause I'm back on my shit Y'all niggas done did it, did it Y'all was talking that shit Got them haters on the run now Cause I'm back on my shit <laughs> You were about to witness A return like no other Ha <laughs> ha